welcome to Cool Outdoors. Today we're in a classroom. You know, today's topic is structure and how to fish and we're going to take a look at this as if we are going on a fishing trip to a lake we have never been. Once again we are back to our class. This week we are talking about ledgers. Remember, next week we are going to work on humps. This is going to be the outlay of our class. We're going to go from slides, and these will be the different slides as we go along. You can read for yourself. This gives you an idea of where the class is going, how we're going to get there. The first thing and most important thing is being able to identify a ledge. Ledges the best ledges are the ones where the contour lines, which are these lines right here. These lines right here are closer together. The closer they are together, the steeper the hill is going down into the deeper water. This, if you can identify these, we being able to find a ledge becomes a lot easier. Now let's see if we can identify a ledge on this map. I'm going to highlight, you see this right here? This is a ledge all the way through here. This is a great example of a ledge. And up here, it looks like there's a ledge up here, too. You guys see how the contour lines are nice and close together, and it's kind of a steep hill going down into deeper water? So they, those are excellent examples. The best place I've ever found to get topographical maps is in the Sportsman's Collections, produced by Sportsman Collection, and they're called Fishing Map Guides. This book right here. We'll break down your state into regions and they'll have all different types of topographical maps for popular lakes in your state. I highly recommend you go and pick one of these up if you don't already have one. And if you would, please use my link if you're going to buy one of these because it helps support the, my channel. Okay, the problem that we're going to solve today during this class is we start to learn how to use topographical maps to identify and plan a fishing trip is the idea that we're going to be taking the family on a vacation at a lake that's over 100 miles away and we need it to be a successful fishing trip. We have a couple kids who have never caught fish and we love to catch fish. <laughs> We want them to have a memorable time that they've never had. We don't know anyone who fishes this lake, so the only tools that we have is a topographical map, which is an excellent tool, and, and our fishing skills. Let's see what we can do to make a, to make a successful fishing trip happen. So we're, I'm going to choose, I chose the lake, but which I have never been to. I just flipped through and picked a random book, a random lake out of uh, the Sportsman's Collection book. Just to show you how you can use the Sportsman's Collection book to plan a trip more efficiently. So, we've identified the lake, which is going to be Coldwater Lake, and we're going to, that's going to be a lake we do. But you can pick your own lake and follow along, and it'll work just as well, and maybe even better. And we have found a topographical map. If you don't have this collection and you need to find them, you can Google for, little, for your lake's topographical map on Google. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they don't, but that book is just gold. It was worth its weight in gold. I highly recommend you guys getting one. So let's identify all the ledges on this lake that we're going to go camping at. I'm going to highlight them for it's easy for us to see. So I see that we have a ledge just running all the way along this end of the lake to about right there, and then the ledge ends. And on the other side, I see the ledge begins again, roughly here, and runs along this side of the lake. 
So those are the two major ledges on this lake. Actually, there's a third ledge that if you guys see this, you have a hump out here, and there's a ledge right there that we might want to also look at. <clears throat> the next thing you need to do is ask you yourself, what kind of fish do I want to catch on this strip? This will help us in the planning process a lot better. We'll be able to eliminate useful water and unuseful water by just looking at the map. Since we, since bass is the most popular game fish in North America, I am choosing bass. So you can do this with any type of fish. You just need to know your fish and what the tendencies are to do. If you wanted to go for, for pike, you could do pike. You could do walleye on this lake. You might even be able to do trout if you go and look to see if they have any. Which is also in this nifty little book we have here. It goes through their stocking records and actually gives you an idea of the water clarity, which is very clear. <laughs> so we know the water is going to be extremely clear. So let's see what we're working with. We are going to use a tool called Google Maps. I highly recommend if you never played around in Google Maps to go around and play. It's amazing what you can find. We're going to see what kind of structures we can identify and we're going to draw them into the map. This will help us prime down our, our ideal area a lot quicker by already having the uh, areas that we plan on fishing identified. So now we're at our Google search bar. Let's see if we can find on maps this lake. So we get to maps, Google, and we're not going to go to the satellite view yet. We are going to stay just in this view, and we're going to type in the lake we're looking for. Cold water lake. It's right there. So here's the state of Michigan. And it says, up here is Cold Water Lake. This looks like this is Family Park, which is probably where you're staying. So let's scroll in and let's take a look at the lake. Now that we're here, we should look at back at a topographical map and check and see where, where we get an idea of what the lake looks like. Here is our lake. We can now go from here and lay it out over the lake here. No, and so we notice that little bend up there. So we know our ledge is running along this end here of the lake, coming around here and going up through here. So let's see if we can figure out some structures on this lake. So in order to do this, we are going to go to Google. We're going to stay on Google Maps Google, but we're going to come down here. We're going to hit this button down here. This one right here called satellite. Now we can see what this lake looks like. We can see now <clears throat> see the uh, this house is all the way around the lake you got some wooded area up here so since we now know this let's start over here and i'm going to guess right here's a point and this is going to be where a ledge starts so let's scroll in to the area and take a look around see what we have to fish it looks like you have a little bit of weeds here but it looks like we have a lot of sand and uh, and that's probably 10 foot of water, so we have at least 10 feet of uh, visibility because we can see the bottom of the lake. And as we scroll along here, we're looking for anything which can hold fish next to this ledge. Right there is a weed patch. We can see that clearly on here. So we're going to mark on, into our map that weeds in this area. It looks like we may have rocks right here. Those people on the beach, one or the other. Wish we could scroll in for you, but we're as close as we can get. You can tell where the ledge is actually on this map quite well because you can see it goes light and it goes dark. I have a feeling if you follow the ledge in the book, that is where our ledge is actually at. We're actually looking at the top of our ledge as we're walking along, as we're moving along here, looking for anything in proximity that would be good fishing. See how this kind of has a different contrast in the stuff around it? 
I would mark this as a contrast line to check out because this could be really good here. It kind of gives the fish a way to move into all deeper water up here as a migration route to feed. And you have docks up here. I don't know if it, this would be good, but it would be an extremely good spot to start looking for bass. And those relines would be too. And we continue just going along right there. Look at that dock. It's hitting the edge of the uh, of the ledge. And take a look. It's a nice long dock. I am, I am willing to bet that there are some nice bass living underneath that dock. There is a good place to fish. And this looks like all the docks along this way would be a great spot to fish. Because the ledge is so close to the shore that all these dock ends are sticking out to the ledge. It would be a great place. A lot of these even have those nice big rounded ends and look like they're pretty close to the water. Giving the bass lots of shade and an escape route to get into deeper water if needed. <clears throat> and we're just going to do go all the way along this ledge real fast. And that's interesting, a floating dock out there. And take a look at that point right there. It looks like you might have weeds on it right there. And then there's the hump that we were talking about. Everything is coming out and you're being able to see this lake in great detail by doing this. This is a great way to start getting the lay of the land a little bit. That's interesting. Maybe sunken lumber? I don't know what the brown is in there. But we're going all the way along this edge until we find stuff that we like and we and we mark it. It's an excellent way to fish. We take this brief break from class for me to ask, please subscribe to my channel and if you're enjoying this class so far, Please share with your friends, retreat it, or post it into your Facebook. Do whatever you can to help my channel grow and become even more popular. <clears throat> now that we have actually went and looked at the the uh, map, we can now write on here, we know we have weeds and docks. And we had a weed patch that seems right up in here. That was a good weed patch here. And when we came around here, we had docks. Dock. Dock. So we kind of know we have docks and weeds. And down here we had a weed patch. You know, submerged weeds. So we'll change. So these are submerged weeds. Same thing over here. Submerged weeds. There's no had no 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 weeds laying on top of the lake. They're all submerged. So I have a feeling this is an excellent smallmouth lake. And uh, something that didn't show up on the map was actually up in here we had like a little deep weed patch there. Along here, it wasn't pretty bare, but there were some docks. So we have more docks, more docks, more docks, and docks here. So we're getting an idea of what this lake is going to be all about. We have weed patches and docks. We had, it may be rocks. It looked like we may have had ra rocks, or rocky shore out in here and some rocks back in here. So now we have an idea of what we're fishing. We're fishing rocky bottom, very clear water. We could see probably 12, 15 feet down to the water. We, we are also fishing small patches of weeds and dark contrast lines where there's different soils, which is a great place to fish for smallmouth. So now that we know kind of what we're fishing and what we're dealing with, we are going to go take this knowledge and create a fishing plan for our trip. <laughs> Now that we know stuff about this lake, we can start using and choosing our fishing techniques. Since we're fishing for bass and it's a clear lake, we know we're going to want to keep to natural colors in smaller baits because bass will be able to see it from far away. So 
this so we can leave all the flipping stuff at home <laughs> we can you leave any pole that has braided line out at home and any pole that has more than 10 and more than 5 15 pound tests as the wire is so clear we need to be able to hide our line we also need no we need smaller baits relatively speaking Smaller baits will give us a lot better chance of catching fish at, in, along this ledge because the water is so clear. So the advantages of doing this is it allows us to know what tackle we need. It allows us to know what tackle to take with you and that's going to save space. And also uh, this technique also lets us know what, what we're fishing for and we can specialize our tackle to that. And we also can now start mentally preparing for a cast. We know they're going to have to be a lot longer, a lot, and we're going to have to use baits that are more realistic. So we have already got all these advantages going in as we're getting ready to go fishing, and we will be better prepared than someone who doesn't prepare and brings everything. Imagine bringing braided line to this lake. Probably wouldn't be a good idea. After we get to the lake, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the boat off the, the trailer and we're going to ride through the lake. We are going to go take a, a first hand look at all the places we plan on fishing. And, so, and we're, going to, we're going to mark them as prime areas in your depth finder. You're going to use the graph, you're going to graph the area. You're going to actually take a closer look at what's on the bottom. Maybe your plans are going to change a little, but you, at least you know that you've already prepared for the possibility of changing. But we do know we're not going to do anything drastically like go flip standing timber. Because there is no timber to flip. Now that we have scouted out the lake, it is time to start fishing. Since we've already picked the techniques that we're going to use, your jigging or drop shotting or whatever, we're comfortable with fishing these submerged weeds and rocks and docks with. <clears throat> we are going to start having to make sure we know how to position the boat. The most important thing is if there's a current in the current in the lake or a lot of wind, to always put your nose into the wind. That allows us to fight with the wind or current and keep our boat where we want. As we're going along, try to identify where the bait fish are. That is a great place to start fishing. A lot of times bass will move up and feed on these unexpected prey. Pay attention to where your boat is at all times. If you drift off where you're trying to fish, you're not going to have as much luck as if you're trying to stay where the fish are. Try to understand the structure and stay on the structure. I hope these tips have been helpful. Thank you for coming to class today. I hope you have learned a lot. If you have learned a lot, please share with a friend. It helps my channel grow and it will help me be able to provide better content in the future. Also, if you haven't subscribed yourself, make sure you subscribe. See that little button up there? Go click it. You know you want to. Remember, next Thursday, we are studying pumps. Have a good day.